So recently I upgraded my router to a uh, dual band 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz router and uh, it uh, broadcasts both signals at the same time so anybody in my household who uses older technology and can't connect to the 5 gigahertz spectrum can still connect to the router but uh, I'm finding more and more that uh, my two laptops I'm using the 5 gigahertz connection to connect to the internet more and more mainly because I get the uh, full bandwidth speed of my internet connection which is uh, 60 megabytes so what I've decided to do is uh, upgrade some of my favorite 2.4 gigahertz antennas and make a new set of antennas for the 5 gigahertz spectrum so the Wi-Fi card that I'm going to use to test all these antennas is the Alpha AWU SO36H. So I've chosen this card because uh, like its older sibling it's got a SMA connector on here that we can uh, connect to our antennas either using a patch cable or connect an antenna directly using a SMA connector. just makes it a lot easier. Now one more thing I want to say about this antenna is unlike its uh, older sibling it also has a built-in antenna um, actually on the PCB of this uh, card itself so even without an antenna in uh, connected to the SMA jack it uh, will still pick up wireless networks with the internal uh, Wi-Fi antenna so I've actually disconnected that and uh, got rid of it altogether so uh, any results we get from any antennas we test aren't skewed by the internal card in there. So I was uh, very surprised to find that this came with uh, a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Now it is a dual band card and uh, it's one of the actual selling points about this card is it is a dual band card but it comes with a 2.4 gigahertz antenna so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to kick off uh, this uh, video and what I'm going to do is put a playlist together with all the antennas that I build so uh, you get a nice little reference library to look at and I'm going to build a common ear antenna and I'm going to test it its performance against uh, this stock 2.4 gigahertz antenna that uh, the Alpha card came with so what we'll do, we'll go onto the bench and we'll have a look at uh, some of the measurements and uh, wavelengths of the 5 gigahertz spectrum compared to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and we'll have a look at some of the materials and tools that we're going to need to actually build this antenna. So why have I got a 2.4 gigahertz antenna with my dual channel USB card? Now the reason for this is manufacturers want to save money and what the manufacturers say is that a quarter wavelength antenna for the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is equal to a half wavelength antenna for the 5 gigahertz spectrum so they are saying that the 5 gigahertz is half of the 2.4 gigahertz in a wavelength and here I've got a rough outline of a dipole antenna which like this one and you've got a quarter wavelength here on the 2.4 gigahertz and a quarter wavelength here add them both together you get a half wavelength antenna for 2.4 gigahertz spectrum so what they're saying is that if that is a quarter wavelength for the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum then the 5 gigahertz spectrum is half then this must be half a wavelength and half a wavelength here and half a wavelength there and you get a full wavelength antenna now unfortunately this is not true and the reason it's not true is because 5 gigahertz is not equal to half the wavelength of the 2.4 gigahertz okay and a half wavelength for the 5 gigahertz is actually 25.86 millimeters and it's a difference of 5.39 millimeters now that is massive that's a massive massive difference I know it only seems small when you're talking millimeters but when you go up in the spectrum things get smaller and if you've seen any of my videos before designing 2.4 gigahertz antennas getting it as close to the millimeters possible can make a huge difference where 
your antenna is tuned to on that spectrum so when millimeters and in fact half millimeters make such a big difference then 5.39 millimeter difference is going to make a massive difference to how your antenna performs so to just compare measurements for the uh, wavelength of both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz a full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is 125 millimeters but it's only 51.72 millimeters it's nowhere near half and we've got half wave here and a quarter wave there so even at quarter wavelength you got 12.93 millimeters for a quarter wavelength at 5 gigahertz and it's 31.25 millimeters for 2.4 gigahertz that is a big big difference so the antenna I thought we'd have a look at building today is the Conlear antenna and what we've got here we've actually got half a wavelength here and we've got three quarter wavelength here and here at the top at the end of the antenna we've actually got just below three quarter wavelength and the reason it's just below is to tune in the capacitance of the antenna so you've got half three quarters and just below three quarters so a few things you're going to need you're going to need a length of copper wire I've actually uh, taken this from some household earth wire and 200 millimeters long is more than enough to complete this antenna you're going to want some kind of marker pen you're going to want a 5 millimeter drill bit because we're going to use this part to create the coils in the antenna you want a reverse SMA connector so you can connect it to your Wi-Fi card you're going to want some wire cutters and some needle nose pliers so to measure your wavelengths on the copper wire you can use a ruler but it's more accurate if you can get some digital calipers now I got these really cheap off eBay I think they're about five or six pounds so well worth the investment and I use them for lots of other things as well they really really are good but uh, you can get away with using a ruler so to start off with we want to uh, first mark off a half wavelength so we get our calipers or you get your ruler whatever you're using and just mark off half wavelength so we want the coil to actually start just here where we've marked off a half wavelength so you get your drill bit or any five, anything that's uh, five millimeters in diameter and put the little mark on the far side like there hold that down with your thumb and then turn under and then back around itself so there you can see the actual coil is starting exactly where I marked off one half wavelength now yes the coils a little bit bent at the moment but we can sort that out at the end there so what we're going to do now is measure off three quarter wavelength from here down to here and we'll put our second coil in so we're now going to mark off three quarter wavelength and it'll be the starting point for our next coil so we want to measure just here where this first coil finishes and put a mark just here that's at 38.79 millimeters so again we'll put the mark just at the start of this drill bit here hold it down with our thumb and make sure that your coil is going in the same direction as your first and the final cut we want to be 35.79 millimeters 
just under three quarter wavelength so it's tuned in for capacitance so again just starting where this second coil ends and we'll put a little mark here where we're going to cut off so now we're going to bend the coils out and straighten the antenna so you need your needle nose pliers and you just want to put them just where you've marked off the start of this first coil here and we're going to bend downwards to give us a right angle like that and again just here we're going to bend this way just where the coil ends and this wavelength starts so we've now got a coil like that do the same with this second coil bend like that. Now what we can do is go in, we can straighten this a little bit, this gap between the coils, we want to get it as close as we can without touching. So something like that and we'll straighten that up a little bit, same with this one. So I've got it as straight as I can, I'll probably give it a little bit more straightening a bit once I've got the end connector on and get some of these kinks out of it. Get the two coils, make sure they're lined up perfectly. Okay. So now we're going to put the end connector on here, which is the half wavelength end of the antenna. And we're going to use a reverse SMA connector so we can connect it to our alpha card. So this SMA connector is designed to go on the end of some coaxial cable. So we're not going to need this sheath here, so we can get rid of that. And what we're going to actually do is connect this pin to the end of our antenna, and it's going to go through this so we can then screw it on to our Wi Fi card. Now, this antenna is not grounded in any way, all we've got is the one driven element, so we want to make sure we're not touching this outer sheath here which normally would be the uh, grounded plane on an antenna so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing around here so it's not going to be touching this outer sheath and I'm also going to measure off I know it seems really picky but this is going to go in about that much of the pin so I'm actually going to cut a little bit off here so the end of the pin to the beginning of this first coil is exactly one wavelength so we're not altering it anyway because otherwise we can probably end up adding three millimeters on here and as I've already said three millimeters in this kind of spectrum is like two feet on uh, a lower spectrum like CB radio so it will make a lot of difference to the antenna and how it performs when uh, we've finished it so even that little couple of millimeters there I'm going to trim that off making sure this is one half wavelength so I'm now ready to connect the pin on the end of the antenna here and I've already put some heat shrink tubing over this part of the antenna and I've got the SMA connector in place here and I've got my pin in some tweezers because it's really really small so what I'm going to do I'm just going to tin the end up here and I've already ground this uh, to a little point here at the end so it fits into this uh, little connector here so uh, ground that to a point and it also uh, makes it nice for some solder to flow on there so on this little 
end connector here I've already uh, put a little bit of solder on the end of there so now if we bring them both together apply a little bit of heat and hopefully we'll get a good connection if I come in underneath I should be able to see it better there we go so that's the antenna fixed to the SMA connector now and uh, what I've also done to give it a bit more strength is just put a little bit of epoxy down in here just to uh, hold it in place and uh, it should last a lot longer that way although you don't have to do that but uh, these uh, connectors are actually designed to be crimped on so uh, a little bit of epoxy down there won't hurt now as for protecting this part of the antenna I've got an old black felt tip pen here and it did have some writing on there and I've just got some wire wool and just uh, got rid of all that writing and I've actually wire wooled all the way around so it uh, looks like an, an even brush finish and what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this here to length and I'm going to use the original end cap and we'll have that as the body of our antenna. So here is the antenna all finished and it's in its housing now and uh, I think you agree it looks uh, rather good. So I think all that's left to do now is to connect it up to the Alpha and uh, give it a test. So I'll be testing this antenna against the stock 2.4 GHz antenna that came with the Alpha card and obviously I'll be testing it on a uh, 5 GHz signal but uh, normally a collinear antenna is basically performs about the same as a rubber duck of this size so it'll be interesting to see how well it does over the 5 GHz spectrum compared to something that's not tuned to it so I'm connected to a test router that's not too far away from a workshop it has got to come from a workshop wall and a garden wall but uh, you don't get the range in the uh, 5 gigahertz spectrum as you do in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and at the moment I'm connected using the stock 2.4 gigahertz rubber duck antenna that I got with the alpha card and it just seems to be a little bit unstable it's jumping from 63 64% up to about 68% and uh, fluctuating back and forth so what I'm going to do I'm going to connect the collinear antenna and uh, we'll see how that performs So it's screwed in now, so we'll just uh, let it settle for a minute. So it seems to have settled down at around 83%. So that's more than a 10% increase in signal strength just by using a uh, antenna that's tuned to the 5 gigahertz network and now it's actually settled down a little bit as well it seems uh, really stable around 83% unlike the 2.4 gigahertz antenna it's a little bit up and down now that it's actually settled it's, uh, it's getting a nice strong signal So I hope you enjoyed that and if you did please give it a uh, big thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you next time.